Welcome to another episode of Fossil Friday. In this video, I will be talking about the selection of fossils that I was recently able to borrow from the University of Portsmouth collections. I was lucky enough to be allowed to choose a few fossils to use in an event happening near Oxford called the Atom Science Festival. Paleontologist Dave Martle kindly let me borrow these specimens from the University of Portsmouth, so I thought I would make a video about them while I had them. Firstly, there are three different species of fossilised bivalves in the collection. They come from a range of different times, including the Jurassic, the Cretaceous and the Eocene. The largest specimen of the three is a remarkable genus called Pinna, which first evolved back in the Carboniferous period, and yet this single genus still persists today, and is very widespread across the world. Next there were two different gastropods, a sea snail and a periwinkle both from the Jurassic period of Earth's history. These organisms would have lived at the bottom of the ocean on the seafloor, grazing on the food available in that area. There were also two species of corals, both of which are part of a group known as the Rugos corals. The smaller species of the two comes from the late Carboniferous period, about 300 million years ago, and shows the cross-section of the inside. The larger species comes from the Silurian period, and is much older than the other species, at about 430 million years old. Three different specimens of ammonites were also included in the collection, and displayed various features of anatomy. Firstly, there was a beautifully preserved ammonite from the mid-Jurassic, which showed the outer shell and appearance of the cephalopod. Next was an interesting specimen that preserved a single segment of an ammonite's shell. This shows what the inner chambers of the ammonite would have looked like, which in life were filled with fluids that the animal could regulate in order to control its buoyancy. The third ammonite specimen shows a complete cross-section of the entire shell, allowing the chambers to be viewed from a different perspective. This ammonite shell comes from the early Jurassic of Lyme Regis, and represents a unique way of looking at the animal that once inhabited it. Fossils of an animal fairly closely related to the ammonites were also in the collection, Bellamnites. There were three specimens of belemnite, all fairly large in size, and like ammonites, these creatures were cephalopods. What you can see here are the remains of the hard internal part of the animals, called the rostrum. In life, belemnites looked very similar to modern day squid, but are different in that squid do not possess these hard parts. Like other ammonite specimens, these three belemnites all come from the Jurassic period. Another very interesting specimen was this brittle star. This was not an actual fossil like the other specimens, however, but was in fact a cast of the real one, which would have been too delicate to use. Brittle stars are closely related to starfish, and this one came from the early Jurassic of Charmouth, the town next to the famous Lyme Regis. Lastly is this very impressive looking specimen of a creature called a trilobite. This animal was an arthropod, and lived long before the age of the dinosaurs, going extinct in the end Permian mass extinction event. However, this group of organisms were very successful when they were alive, surviving for an incredible 270 million years in total. This specimen has been extremely well preserved, and it is even possible to see the creature's eyes, which would have allowed the trilobite to watch out for predators and other dangers when alive. Thank you for watching this episode of Fossil Friday. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Remember to follow me on social media and subscribe to see more videos like this one.